the editor in chief of Taishi Media. Uh, today, I'm going to be the moderator for our passion uh, for our panel. And uh, I think since we have more Chinese audience here, I will talk. I will moderate in Chinese. But for some more most, most important parts, maybe I try to summarize. Uh, let's start it. 呃，我们今天在这儿呢，主要是讨论一个非常有趣也非常重要的问题。这个问题呢，我们大家都知道，就是中国的经济啊，现在已经在一个十字路口。那么中国的女性的角色呢，在社会的角色，在经济角色，又是在什么样的一个情况下呢？将来会是一个什么样的情形呢？我们现在已经很熟悉呢。这个中国的成熟的女企业家，有很多成功的女企业家，她们呢是中国的这个女性的这个骄傲。但是，普通人怎么样呢？关于这女性企业家中底下底下的庞大的基础是什么情景呢？这个中国的这个性别在教育。在健康的这个领域，它这个性别上的有多大的，中间有多大的这个一个鸿沟呢？女性能不能享受到于商业和政治领域有一个同样的这个进入机会呢？他们是不是有足大的声音，来维护他们足够大的声音，来维护他们自己的权利和利益呢？他们的。人力资本的潜力是不是真正的被认识到有发展，被认识到被能够得以实现呢？这些问题呢，我们现在先看一个短片。这个短片呢，是世界经济论坛做的关于中国女性问题的调查，请大家看。
。好，刚才我们看一个短片。呃，我们也知道，我们中看，我们中国的这个这个女性的这个地位还有待改善啊，这个性别的这个鸿沟还是很大。呃，我们中国呢，在经济力上呢，这个是蔡志做的是一个两千一一年的一个比较，在这个在一一年的一个情况，这这一年呢，我们中国的竞争力呢排名是是第二十六名。然后我们在这个性别指数上的排名是第二十一名。啊，大家都知道今年呢，呃。WEF 新公布的这个竞争力报告呢，中国下滑到第二十九名。那么这种情况下，中国的这个，因为我们关注的是竞争力和这个性别性别这个鸿沟之间的关系，性别差别之间的关系。那么我们看到呢，今年的这个我们这个指数性别指数大概会是多少？这个请大家呢关注明年一月份即将出的报告，这个也是我们非常关心的一个话题。今天我们。Today, it's really an honor and a pleasure for us to have a very strong lineup of panelists. Five panelists. I'd like to introduce all of them to you. First of all, Ms. Wang Jingbo. She is a well-known Chinese businesswoman. From Noah Holdings, CEO of Noah, a very successful businesswoman. The second is He Zhenghong, President of China Entrepreneur Magazine. The third panelist is Han Jian. Han Jian. This Han Jian is a very famous professor of management from CIMS. And the fourth is a very famous businesswoman in the world, also an activist. This in a women's affairs field. She worked for Millennium Technology Company. She is the CEO and president of the company. Deborah Sunsira. The fifth one, you all know her. 这个大家都很熟悉的，应该本来应该坐我代替我坐这个主持位置，但是她说今天要体验一下演讲者的感觉，所以我说好，那也是我们的大家最熟悉的一个我们的女主持人，成功的叫阳光的阳光媒体集团的主席杨澜。那么下面我们就开始讨论这个问题。我想首先呢，呃，还是按照我们做的这个顺序呢，我呢依次呢。问大家一些问题，或者请大家呢先谈一谈看法，我们接着谈也可以比较放松。如果你们有愿要插话呢，可以给我一个暗示，中途就可以插话。Or if someone just jump in, you can just let me know, and you can always do that if you want to. Anyway, uh, we're from here. Let's start here. Then, finally, we'll give the opportunity to everyone. And then we're going to open the floor. Hopefully, we'll have some questions. Uh, Jinbo, you first. So, can I start with you? Can you first talk about the video? 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 这个性别差距这个问题呢，或者说这个女性的权利这个问题呢，可能跟我们想不一样。Things might not be exactly the same as what we thought or imagined. You are a very successful businesswoman, but you don't really feel the kind of challenges in terms of gender. So what are things like in your company? Do you think that is there any gender gap in trans society, or what is your observation, or what are your thinking along these lines? First of all. 比较关心的嘛，也很愿意来讨论。但是刚才看那个短片，我觉得也有些刺激哈，因为我是从小在中国长大的，是成都人。但是其实就是讲，我们很早呃，能够特别的感受到，在中国男女有非常大的差距，或者说有一些不平等的对待。从从上学到我们的，从读书哈、啊、到工作，到生活中，我总体来讲，我觉得是生活在一个相对比较平等的一个社会和时代吧。Equality. It is an era of gender equality. I started my own business. 也也许也有不同。如果如果要很认真的来讲的话，但这种不同呢，我总体来讲是觉得比较呃，可能是更向有利的方向。This might be positive differences. So I cannot really take a macro perspective. I will have to start with my own experiences. Every person has a very unique experience. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know, for every person, inside you have your own experiences. You know,
身上表现的女性的角色也非常多，而不是呃完全的这个男性的角色。所以总体来讲，我觉得未来的社会可能不是讨论这个男性和女性的差别，而是在做一个人的个体，在你的内心里如何达到这个男性和女性的平衡。Uh, strike a balance between this masking role and the feminine role inside yourself. How can you really find your inner peace and happiness? That's my perspective on this topic. But we also want to talk about 农村是不是在中国的话，女性的地位可能因为差别比较大？ China, 那只能从我身边谈起。其实我我们家哈，我用过两个阿姨，一个呢跟随我们十年，一个是这个今年才刚刚到我们家的。我也觉得你们可能不是完全像我们想的一样。比如说我们我那个阿姨呢，她就有呃，她有一个儿子一个女儿，但是他们家读书的是她的，是她的女儿，而且她在工作的还进程，真的是。那我体现的这个知识化的这个过程，还有一些。Not the son. And one day, she told me that her daughter went to a very good university. Well, um, her son has been doing well. 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 Her son has 饼干，因为我是公司的创始人，所以我是女性。You know, 但是下面这一层全都是男性。然后在下面一层可能是男性。然后我们觉得这个男女搭配工作不累。<laughs> and when men and women pair together at work, so in general, I think that there's pretty good gender equality. Ah, and Lisa, in this case, the situation is very good. Thank you for your contribution. So you give us some very good examples about the gender equality in the workplace. Because it's not just about gender equality. 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 Because it's not just about gender Jing, uh, 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 uh,
于淑敏，然后零九年我们开始推出女性的评选，就是推推出中国最具影响力的商界木兰。这个时候呢，基本上是一个年会和一个报道做主题的，每年评三十名。我把这个每年年会的主题和报道的题目就可以看出来啊，商业世界中女性力量的变化。第一次是零九年刚好过金危机，所以我们年会的主题和报道的主题都是冬天里的女性领导。这是一个根据我觉得跟当时的时的那个形式比较比较相关的。第二第二届呢，我们就关注了叫他觉。We began to talk about the business power. 会对商业造成影响。那么第三届年会呢，我们做的是幸福商业，就是说女性抉择可以影响商业以后呢，我们觉得我们女性可能要给商业世界增加一点幸福的因素，平衡的因素。第四届呢，我们就做的是他力量，重新创造商业。这个从我们这个主题来看的话，是实际上是看女性的在商业世界上的力量是一点点变化。首先，我们从女二号认为它是一个从属地位。在一个男性为主的男性话语权特别强势的商业社会中间，女人是处于处于一个从属地位，但是很快。这个这个就就在变化。呃，实际上在现实生活中，我们也发现非常多的女性企业家，她在崛起中间，成长了自己的企业，同时也有商业规则。As they enter into the business community, they meet a number of kind of industry rules, and they create their own rules. We see Yang Lan here, who's very influential in shaping the environment in which she operated. They use their own power and they use their own ambition to change the business. Environment in which they、uh, survive and thrive. So, what are these Chinese biz businesswomen? What are the most outstanding characteristics of them? Are they some sort of hermaphroditic mix of yin and yang? Because in truth, the business world asks them, demands them to be male, to be masculine. To be the stars of the show, but the goal for women in the business world is to find a real balance. To use the rules of the feminine and the masculine in a more harmonious mean. In this society, we should focus on the rules of the rules of law, the rules of business, rather than the rules of what a man or a woman should be. So the, every step forward for the power of women in business is a step forward for the larger health and sophistication of the business environment generally. Well, thank you very much. That's a very enlightening、uh, perspective. I'd like to ask, as you've been following this subject, have you noticed difficulties for women, instances in which a leader's Gender has brought pressure or resistance. Well, we've noted that in the business world,、uh, we, we've done several、uh, studies or investigations on what should a woman business leader be, and we've interviewed a lot of people. And we were unable to really find a clear definition or an ideal. We have a, a ranking of influential business uh, of, of business leaders. Influential businesswomen. One of them, Bao Gang Steel Company. The leader, their CEO. This is a very powerful woman business leader. But in the larger ranking of influential business leaders in China, we see that there is still a gap, and women are not fully represented.
成为有影响力的人物。Yes, so as a woman wants to not just enter the business community, but to influence it,、uh, have you discovered any particularly successful practices, best practices, or, or signs of that influence in effect? Yes, many women are very active, and they use the kind of unique ability to balance that women seem to have. Uh, that, that stands out from the overwhelming masculinity of, of male business leaders. For example, At an eve,、uh, at, at an eve event, we saw the. A comparison, a distinct、uh, comparison of women and male business leaders, and how they、uh, addressed their respective roles. Now let's move now to Han Jian, who is in the role of an educator. Preparing students to be the future professionals. Could you share with us how you、uh, how you see this gender issue? Well, I'd like to address it from three perspectives or three levels,、uh, three distinctions I see in the in the gender in the professional sector. One is a difference in growth or upbringing and education. The truth is that even with equal educational opportunities, not all women have equal upbringing opportunities. For example, in my, the MBA program that I teach, the average age is about 28 years old. It's about 50 over half of the international business school. And the gender percentage is, you know, between 40, 49, 50, 51%. The EMBA program average age is about 38 years old. And we are constantly looking to attract more women from the government public sector. Uh, or from the private sector, because currently only 20% of the EMBA students are female, 80% are male. So we see that they may have equal educational opportunities, but in that transition period, that, that growth period from the MBA level to the EMBA level,、uh, women obviously face resistance. They may have the equal opportunity in learning, but perhaps unequal opportunity in development. Of course, there may be other factors to play. Expectations, including women's expectations. Oh, and an income gap. And an income gap that is reflected at the family level, where a husband might tell essentially give a woman a, 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 his wife a budget based on her income rather than a pool income. There's also this conception that a dignified woman wouldn't ask for a raise; they wouldn't pursue promotion aggressively. They maintain a sort of stature. And of course, other social expectations of role. And we see this reflected in other countries as well. We know that oftentimes responsibilities are distributed evenly between men and women, but income is not. Now, looking at the workforce here in China. 
政治和文化的需求，特别是在这个政、这个经济、这个市场经济的这样的一个控制下，国家对于劳动力资源有一个控制之后，他希望在这样的一个呃劳动力大军中，嗯、呃，妇女能够做出最大的、最大化的一个贡献。所以说呢，这个呃从数量上来讲，那么女性和男性的这样的一个就业比例。看起来其实是比很多呃其他的国家要好，但是从影响力刚才我们两位嘉宾都说到了，女性在职场中、在学界、在政界的影响力来讲的话，那是远远不够的。那么比如说我说。呃，女性高管占到啊、呃、公司管理的比例，比如说我们政界的高官占到整个高官的一个比例，比如说啊、呃、学校里面的教授占到这个整个女性教授占到整个这个 faculty 的这个比例，其实啊、呃、都是相对来说，其实你你会看到会有很多的不平均，而且很多时候这个女性本身就变成了一个。And women themselves, I like. 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 Trends that are visible in our society, we do see a lot of inequality. Ah, thank you very much, Han Jian. I very much agree. 就是在。Development, professional development opportunities. Because now China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity to become a leader in the world. China has an opportunity There's still a lot of opportunity in the commercial sector, in, in business in China. And we see that 31% of Chinese companies have women in uh, have women as shareholders, major share, major partners. In a list of recent list of the world's 50 most influential women, Five were Chinese, and in a Forbes list of billionaires, also five Chinese women. So that's not bad. But in the political world in China, I'll share some statistics of national, the NPC delegates. But in the political world in China, there are only 13 women. 如果说倒是国家领导人是正的领导人呢，我们也知道在这个呃宋庆龄之后呢，我们还没有看到女性。另外呢，有一个比较重要的数字呢，就是关于中共中央委员和候补委员的数字。这个数字在一九七七年呢是百分之十一是女性，现三十五年以后的现在呢不到百分之十，所以就可以看出呢，他这个性别的分布啊。它在某种程度还是反映了你所这个领域的进步程度啊、呃，比方说农村和城市的差别呀、啊、等等，我们都可以看到这一点。所以我呢就是刚才做一个补充。Uh, wider spread popularization of women in political authority at, for example, the grassroots level, rural areas. Deborah, could you share with us some of your comments? Oh, 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 transformed for so many years, in fact decades, uh, after the, the revolution, women gained equal rights uh, through Chairman Mao's uh, view, I guess, that women hold up half the sky, if I'm 
quoting him, him correctly. So we have a very well-educated set of women in China who can contribute to the economic dynamism um, of this country, and, and yet there still does seem to be a gender gap. What strikes me is, as all of you speak is how similar, in fact, the difference or the disparities are within, for instance, the U.S., where I work now, and China. It's, it's not a disparity in education anymore, and it certainly hasn't been for decades in China. Um, it's not a disparity in the legal framework of work. Um, there is still disparity in how that legal framework is applied. Both in the U.S. and China, women are not paid the same as a man for the same work. And so sometimes it's giving the, those laws teeth so that it isn't when, when a choice needs to be made about who will take on elder care, who will take on child care, it's not automatically about the highest earner uh, because if there's disparity in wages, the highest earner is going to be male. Um, so we, we do need to equalize those things and progress is being made. Um, so I think in, in China... Women will earn about 69% of what a man will earn for the same work. In the U.S., it's up to about 77, but you know there's still a lot of room to, to go. So it's been striking to see how how similar uh, the the challenges th that we face are. I think one of the biggest uh, issues for China, and you saw it in the in the gender gap report, is this issue of the disproportionate birth rate, and that there is still an undervaluing of women um, in, and, it, and it's expressed in a very disproportionate birth rate, choice to, to give birth to men instead of to, to women um, voluntarily. And in some of the discussions we've had, that, yeah. that reflects the, the perhaps disparity between urban China and, and rural China. So there's, a, there's, there's a, perhaps a lot of work to do in terms of accessing the human capital in the rural areas um, of China, and, and whereas the urban areas seem to be um, very, very similar to other uh, developed nations. So I, I think we have a lot to learn from one another. I think that as women around the world, we can really share and grow from the experiences of one another. It's very exciting to see these women leaders here and to hear from them that actually under them within organizations there are a cadre of women growing up. I think on the political side there's disparity in most developed nations too. You know, we can still count probably maybe it takes more than one hand, maybe it's two hands now, the number of countries that actually have been led by a woman. And when we look at even the US Congress and Senate, there is still an underrepresentation of women versus their uh, participation in uh, the general population, but it's closing. And I'm, I'm hopeful that in China that will also happen because that's where the influence comes to give teeth to the laws on equal pay for equal work and enabling women to really leverage their education. I think another great point that Jiang made was the, the, the fact that women also have different choices their, women will not always choose the executive career. They will sometimes choose to have a more balanced life and, and very much want to make their career and contribution more of a family-oriented one, and that, that should be fine. And I think that's one place where in, in the U.S. that balance has emerged, perhaps more so than it may have here, that there are different paths women and that's that's very acceptable and that's acceptable in the workplace too um, it sounds it sounds I, I was resonating with the balance you were talking about Jen Hong where women need to find their balance and and be able to make their their choice it's not only about being aggressive in the workplace it's about being present uh, doing fulfilling work and fulfilling a passion and aspiration for a particular woman and I think that's going to be a, a, a path that it, it will be great to see Chinese women go down. So I think there are gaps to close, but it's a, it comes off a base in China of tremendous access, access to education, access to those early jobs. And the conundrum for 
China as it is for other developed nations is how to bridge that gap to the next level, to the leadership, the political leadership, the company leadership. And I'll stop there and move on to you. Thank you. Thank you. Sinsi的听到他这样一个结论,就觉得我们现在中国女性去遇到的问题呢,就今天在做谈的这块很多呢,其实跟美国女性是非常相似的,有的问题的这很多共同点,但是呢,我们也注意到呢,待会儿呢
管理当中也一半都是女性。呃，我觉得女性在呃社会的各个方面，特别我觉得在媒体的产业当中是非常富有创造力和领导力的。这可以看到一个改变。那么我想说，为什么说这个过程是被压缩的呢？那么无论是在欧洲还是在美国，啊，他们通过女权的这个运动，通过一次大战、二次大战以后，慢慢的加入到工作的行列，呃，到通过去烧胸罩这样的一些极端的行为，来来表现出女性的呃这个能够呃摆脱一种传统的束缚。那我也采访过美国这个呃 Cosmopolitan Magazine 的过去一个主编，他就当时有一个。很有名的口号是针对五十年代的美国年轻的女性，她就是说：“好女孩上天堂，坏女孩走四方啊、uh, ，Good girls go to heaven, bad girls go everywhere <笑>。”那实际上这个是反映了当年呃西方的呃年轻的女性，她们走出家庭的传统角色，进入到社会，有了投票权，可以参加工作，可以参加市场的竞争，这样一个主动追求的过程。而我们看到我们中国的女性，比如说从我母亲这一代。女性能够顶半边天，这样的一个角色的制定，实际上是从上而下被赋予的，而不完全是女性从个人的角度自主的去争取来的。所以你就会发现在今天的商业社会，有一个呃有一个反哺的过程，就是女性要重新思考什么是我真正的选择，我的选择是不是要跟男人一样的去在商场上打拼。或者说挣一样多的钱， so、或者拥有一样大的上市公司，还是说我的生活当中幸福是一个比成功更重要的一个我的目标？那么，呃，我们阳光媒体集团的“天下女人”这样一个栏目和后来我们的一个女性社区，叫做 Her Village， 我们在过去的五年当中一直在做女性的他们的呃情感。呃，就是生活品质的一种调查。So、那我们就发现，对比男性来说，女性对于幸福的追求的这种渴望的程度，远远高于对于社会认同和成功的这种渴望程度。So、而对于他们来说，自己和周边人的关系，跟丈夫的、孩子的、父母的、朋友的、职场当中同事们的关系，对于他们情绪的左右，比他们单纯的加薪要来的更为重要。So、所以，我想今天的中国女性在追求。平等的过程当中，不仅仅是说我是不是能够以同样的岗位挣得跟男人同样多的钱，他还要问自己说：我人生的追求到底是什么？我可以去选择一个更平衡的生活吗？所以我想，其实当女性能够有更多的选择去选择他们的生活，呃，既不是按照呃妇女能够顶半边天这样的一个简单的说教，就一定要做他们不喜欢的工作，也不需要呃听到说要嫁一个富豪或者说嫁一个高富。We don't have to marry a rich man. So we get to choose. 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 We get to We have got a lot of complete pictures. Things are quite clear. We can see that things are very positive. 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 One question each person. Maybe please, anyone, anyone want to ask a question to the yeah. panelists? Okay, please, now. So please identify yourself. Recommend yourself. And also point out whom you want to get the answer, to please. We want to okay. ask this question um, to you. My name is Yawa Hansen Kuo. I'm from Ghana. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a women's leadership organization. We work with young women and young girls to prepare them for the workplace and, and things of that nature. 
my experience shows me that a lot of efforts towards improving the status of women seems to attract suspicion and resistance from men. So my question to the panel, it doesn't really matter who answers, but I'm interested to see in this context how and if their engagements with men in the process of pushing women forward. Thank you. Thank you. She's just translating the question that was posed by the audience member just now. So, Nuri, Bob, what Susie saw the Gajon Nuri, she did the show, Niman Samyang, her Nancy Dajada, Samakan Nancy, Samakan, that you mean. Can I take her? I mean, thank you, and I like to answer this question in English because I addressed just address your question. Um, I think one thing is that um, about social networking, because uh, social networking, the social interaction is the basic behavior between um, the men and the women. So from the company management perspective, one challenge is that women um, managers, middle level managers, have difficulty to be promoted to the higher level um, in many cases is that they were excluded from the men's social network. And uh, research also support, um, provided evidence. And um, so uh, one thing I think company can do to, um, to promote women executive development and women talent, female talents development is try to incorporate them, try to encourage them to design some programs to engage them into um, a mutual communication uh, with the uh, male executives. That's um, one thing. Another thing is um, we probably, when we're discussing women issues, we probably also need more um, male um, to uh, into involve them into this discussion. Um, it's a shame that we don't have any male panelists here um, yeah. join our discussion on the stage. Uh, it will be um, a great learning process to learn how male, um, their our counterpart, gender counterparts, their reaction um, to our points and um, to our stories. Um, so I think that's a, a Maybe the next step would be to incorporate more male people to join us. Okay. Just can I? I, if it had been up to me, I would have uh, invited a male uh, participant as well. Just to, to your to your comment, I think when when we look at different countries, different countries are at very different stages of the ability and engagement of, of women. And I think the, the bigger the disparities and the bigger the disparity in education, in the legal framework, in the, the social mores, the, the stronger the need for, in some ways, top-down sponsorship. And I do believe that um, having male leaders who make the advancement of women a priority and who speak up for it, build it into metrics and goals within organizations are, are transforming leaders in, in that way. So, yes, there's likely to be resistance. I completely agree with Jiang that the, the networking and the connection of women into the, the more social framework so that they become part of the, the dialogue, so that they're known um, when decisions are made about promotions you know, people are less likely to promote somebody they don't know, whereas if they, you know, a U.S. phenomenon, if they've played golf uh, <laughs> together uh, in a foursome with a younger uh, upcoming man, they're more likely to say, yeah, I know that guy. I can support his promotion. So there, there needs to be ways of, of creating those interactions. But when they don't really exist, it's going to take strong leadership from the top. And I really do believe in metrics and goals. Any business objective that we set ourselves, we set a goal and we set metrics around it and we track it. But somehow this concept of, of bringing up gender 
equality or, or parity doesn't tend to get the goals and metrics around it, and therefore one imagines that it's not as important as other business objectives. I'd like to. I very much agree with what Yang Lan said. We should think about what is our mission. Why do we have different sexes? Perhaps there are different life missions, existential uh, goals. Perhaps a woman has different needs. For example, when I, had, when I started my business, I just had my first child. And I talked it over with my husband. I had, this, I had this opportunity, and I talked it over with my husband. I said, we just had a child a month ago, but I, uh, but I want to do this. And I asked him for time. I said, uh, from the age, you know, since he was born until he's seven, I will, of course, give, him as much, give my child as much time as, po uh, as possible, but I also want to start this business. And my husband, uh, very, very grateful, he understood and supported my decision. And I think that that conversation that I had with him is very important, and I think that that communication is, is critical. So I think regardless of whether it's the, the business world or the public affairs world, the government, uh, women absolutely do have power to, to change the social landscape. But uh, women are also mothers and they're also daughters. And to me, uh, my mother is, is like a, a, a saint. She's the most important thing to me. And if, for, God forbid, she got sick, either I or someone in my family would absolutely have to drop everything and, and go over to, to take care of it. So that kind of contribution that I make to the family is equally important to me as the我们有一个女性组织叫中国企业家模仿 they send information about how aggressive or about how uh, obedient you are. So I think that when we create an organization that we want to see gender parity, we treat it like just as we have biodiversity. We want gender diversity. We want a plurality of styles. And in our magazine, we certainly invite uh, men to discuss women's issues. If you have a women's organization that wants real balance and real efficacy, it's very important to provide a channel for men to understand and through understanding respect the work that's being done. And that can reduce resistance. That can reduce uh, the, any, any sort of... Pushback. We had a, a course where a, uh, to, to train women, and a lot of women signed up, but at the last minute they, they, they canceled because their husbands were going out of town for work, and they needed to stay home and take care of the kids. We heard about uh, China's 61 on the gender gap list. Apart from social influences, how do you think that women's own decisions, where they make this 
they decide to stay at home. How much does that account for China's ranking? I remember several years ago, 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 I remember several
something we see in the recruitment industry is that women seem to have a different social operation circle to men. Um, men seem in the workplace to have a very tight social circle within the workplace. Women seem to have a tight social circle within the workplace, but it also extends a long way outside the workplace into a much wider social circle. And I think that we see when we're offering women jobs, they can take forever to make their mind up. Men make their mind up very quickly. And I think it's because they sit within this work circle and they don't have these other much wider considerations to make that exist in this circle socially, it's about family, it's about lifestyle, it's about all these other things that men generally don't seem to have. And I just wonder if there's a way of trying to make these circles merge a little bit more, because I think if that were to happen, I think that would enable men to understand women a lot better, and women to understand men a lot better, and I think it would help in the workplace as well if, um, if, if you could somehow get to understand where the social importance lies and where the sort of circles of influence lie for men and women. And I'd just like to hear some comments from women on that. Is it true? Am I, am, am I correct in saying that it's, we have a different focus as men to women or not? Well, maybe I can, okay, I can yeah. kick off answering that, that question. Did you want to make interpretation first, Julie? Or? Yeah, it, it's okay. I just want to, yeah, we, we need to finish the rest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just short. So uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very interesting and important question. Um, you maybe hit on something when you said you were doing board and CEO searches because that tends to be older, right? When we, in, in our company, um, we have a much younger population and what we're finding is that these are not women's issues. These are across the board for men and women. And younger men are making different choices. Younger men are making choices of balance. They're looking for a much... Um, I, I do speak from a US perspective, so I, I leave it to my Chinese colleagues to, to talk about China. But younger men are saying, no, it's not all about work. Life is about many more things than work. And we are seeing a broadening of those male networks. We're seeing men making different choices about, about career, about where they will move, about what they will do. So I actually see these issues as becoming less and less women's issues, apart from breastfeeding. I which agree. Only I we agree. can do. But uh, the, these are very important to this, this millennial generation uh, coming up through the, through the workplace. So I do think the circles will merge, but maybe not in the way you might have anticipated. Thank you. Uh, Jan 我们这个场子让给下一节谢谢大家的关注谢谢我们的 Thank you, thank you for your time.